Welcome to Rollin' Rambles, It's Dark Edition. Yes, I'm recording later than usual, and uh, that means it's going to be kind of weird. So, don't be surprised. I also have this on auto ISO, so the brightness will vary. I won't know how. If I end up basically talking to you as a black blob inside of a well-lit box, sorry! A little bit of a note here before we go forward, if you're a regular viewer, then you probably have been at least mildly concerned about the fact that I seem to cough a lot in all my videos. I want to explain that a little more clearly so that you don't worry. I have had issues for basically all of my life with weather changes, and I think especially with air that is too dry uh, or, or too humid. Um, I, I don't respond very well in the throat department to weather changes and humidity changes that are pretty quick. Um, typically, whenever it's very humid, we'll run the air conditioner a lot more, and uh, that means that the air around me, to keep it cool, it also has to be dried out, which dries my throat, which makes me cough. Me coughing all the friggin' time is not some sort of sign that I have throat cancer. I did it back then, I do it today. It's, it's always been a thing. I'm probably not gonna die of dry throat. Today's discussion is uh, definitely <laughs> is definitely a little bit different because uh, usually usually we will talk about tech or politics um, from the nerd perspective, from the I'm a guy who owns a business and does expert level computer stuff. Um, and snarks at people on the internet every five seconds. But we're gonna jump out of that a little bit and into discussing people not being able to use computers. I know that sounds weird, doesn't it? But it's actually a slow but alarming slide. We have probably the most technology around us that has ever been around for any of our lives. I mean, if you think about it, everybody has a smartphone in their pocket, you know, something that's more powerful than supercomputers in the late 70s and early 80s is, <laughs> is sitting in your pocket, and you use it to look up cat videos and uh, listen to ads followed by me complaining about other people that are just as obnoxious as I am. For quite some time, people have been shifting from using computers to using phones and tablets as their primary means of accessing the internet and just generally interacting with the electronic world. This shift has happened very slowly over time, but uh, as tablets started to become cheap and ubiquitous, when you could get a hundred, hundred fifty dollar or even cheaper Android tablet at Walmart, uh, you started to see normies and mass adopt tablets as a way to get on the internet for 80 bucks instead of buying a $300 computer. You know, I actually have a $100 laptop. The, the thing is, it's literally cost me 103 actually, so maybe I was lying, but $103 new. It, it's, it's one of the cheapies, but it gets the job done. <clears throat> the thing that a laptop has that a tablet doesn't have is a keyboard and, and, and a touchpad. So basically, ways of communicating with the computer what you what you want it to do that don't involve touching a membrane screen that sees how fat your fingers are. I want to tell you, and I'm not picking on this person by any means, and I'm sure she's going to watch this and groan, because she knows. Um, I hired a lady. She's a brilliant lady. I was actually blown away by how quickly she adapted to working on computers. Um, in fact, it, it, the point of pride that I kind of just repeatedly blast is that um, she was able to disassemble and reassemble twice on her second day. Um, I can't remember if it was Alienware or what, but one of those big ugly gaming, no, it was an HP Omen, I think. Uh, big ugly gaming laptop. Absolutely brilliant. Um, you, you, you wouldn't believe it. Just takes really well to the process of figuring out how to get something apart. If she doesn't know, she'll look it up on YouTube and find, you know, find a tutorial from somebody who's already done it. I keep turning the brightness up on the camera. Sorry about that. And, uh, you know, once she's 
got it figured out. She just does it. And she hasn't messed a single thing up. And it's been, what, I don't know, a couple months? I can't remember. My brain's fried. But anyway, the reason that I'm bringing her up is that after all that praise, you probably are like, oh, hey, I'm so glad that Jody finally found the, the perfect, ideal candidate to, to be somebody to help him with the computer business and all that other stuff. Well, no, she's not ideal. Everybody has their flaws, including me, especially me. Everybody makes mistakes. I just make more of them. But yeah, everybody has their flaws, and she's no exception. While she is absolutely uh, just shockingly brilliant at taking apart computers, something that she had no experience at all with, um, her biggest, perhaps, weakness in the field is that she doesn't actually know how to operate a computer using the keyboard <laughs> in, in specific. She's not used to it. I shouldn't say that she doesn't know how to use it, because that's not true. It's just that because she's spent so much time interacting with touch screens and touch screen keyboards, using a normal computer keyboard has become a difficult skill to get used to. And remembering keyboard things like keyboard shortcuts is actually pretty difficult. Um, she, she writes it down. She does a good job. She does, she, she's making progress about the same as anybody I've ever seen um, that had to learn how to do all the weird keyboard shortcut or weird Linux command stuff that I do. Um, she, she's making about the same progress that literally everybody else that's ever worked for me has made. So, you know, no big shock there. But what was surprising to me is that she had actually, this is the first person that I've been in close quarters with, working closely with, that has been able to do computer stuff like that. And yet when you put the keyboard in front of her, it's difficult. It's, it's something that she struggles with and it, it's not a slight against her. It, it's not really her fault if the touchscreen devices have served her needs adequately for that long. I mean, that does say a little bit about how versatile touchscreen devices can be, um, especially if you just don't do much outside of consumption of content. Um, there, you know, a tablet or a phone is really not that bad. And that's the thing is that the, the jobs that she did before, they were not the kind of jobs where you really had to sit there and, and goof with a computer terminal for a long time or anything like that. Um, mostly like public facing stuff. But anyway, I don't want to get too focused on the person. The point is she doesn't really know, if you want to call it that, or at least is not very used to using a computer keyboard and a mouse to get actual like work done on a computer. Um, so whenever I ask her to do certain things, um, at first it was kind of like if you're a computer nerd with a decade of experience who flies on the keyboard and then you sit down with grandma and she, she hunt and pecks, just does the, the one, you know, the one finger at a time thing. Now she doesn't, this one doesn't hunt and peck, but it's that slowdown. You can just see the cognition switch from, I know this to wait. Okay. I have to think about it first. I have to think this, I have to make sure I think about it. And you, you can see the gear switch and it, it, it's pretty obvious. And this has been a thing for a long time. Um, she is younger than me, um, not by a massive amount, but, but by enough that she didn't have to deal with the crap in the early 80s, at least. The exposure is to newer technologies and just, just not having to deal with technology on a professional level as heavily. Uh, now she's in a tech heavy field, disassembling computers like lightning, uh, but struggling on a keyboard. She is perhaps the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, that's right. This is the tip of the iceberg because you know what? She's getting pretty good. I have all faith that within another two months, the whole keyboard thing isn't even going to be an issue. That, that skills gap will have closed back up and she'll be flying just fine. She's already doing great. So anyway, when we start getting into Gen Z, we start even, you know, getting toward Gen Alpha, there is this interesting phenomenon and it, it's already ha kind of happened with cars too, where the people who use the technology, the technology has advanced to such a point that the people who use it, they don't have to know how it works. They don't have to understand it. They don't have to have any kind of active involvement with 
it on a mechanical level, on an intellectual level, it is just a tool to do things. And that speaks very highly to how far we have come with technology in general. However, it speaks very poorly of our future should things continue in this way. We desperately need younger people to adopt an understanding of technology, not just a surface level exposure. If you've ever heard of it, and I've mentioned it several times, um, it's sort of a cargo cult thing. Really quick recap, cargo cult refers to the, the concept where you have these primitive people on an island that have never been exposed to technology. You show up, um, like, like either you show up with a bunch of junk and give it to them, or uh, say a ship just drifts ashore with a bunch of cargo in it that has all this magnificent technological wonder. Like these people are making wooden spears or, or rock tip spears, and there's like a harpoon gun and, and machetes and stuff in there. Um, or whatever, you know, fireworks. So what you end up with is these people, because they have not been exposed to the technology, it's indistinguishable from magic. And they don't understand it, so once the technology, you know, they've gotten their hands on some of it, they try to figure out how they can, you know, basically continue getting this. Like, we got this thing, how can we, how can we make another? How can we get more? But because they have no clue and it's, it's basically magic to them, what they do is try to emulate like the behaviors or wh whatever they perceive as how the people who had it did things in the hopes that they'll also be able to do it. They, they basically pretend this surface level, they just see what the people were like or, you know, that they, they pretend on the most surface level stuff and there's no substance behind it. It's called a cargo cult cargo cult mentality, whatever. Here comes one of my famous coughs. I hope you're ready. <clears throat> All right, I have died. So Gen Z, despite being awash in technology from a fairly early age and the internet, Gen Z can, uh, can say Rizzler all day long, but they can't really understand how their tablet or computer or whatever function. Um, they can connect to a Wi-Fi network, but they couldn't possibly explain, like, even just like the wireless standards to you. They have no clue what the difference is between Wi-Fi in, AC, AX, AXE. They, they don't know what any of that stuff is. And even if you simplified it and you said, well, you know, the new, the, the new retroactive naming where they call it Wi-Fi 4, 5, and 6, and 6E and all that, even if you go with that methodology, they still, they still don't really know um, anything about that. Like this stuff is just foreign to them. And you would think that a so-called digital native would have an understanding that, well, Wi-Fi 5 and 6, you know, they're faster than 4, you know, and they, they go a longer range. You'd think they'd, they'd have a little bit of that, but they don't have to. They have, there's no need for them to know that. So they just don't. So when they go to the store to buy a router, they're gonna buy a router you know, well, they're probably not going to buy a router. They're probably going to hire me um, to tell them what router to get. Or they're going to go look around on the internet and just trust some article that says, oh, this will this and this and this. You know, even though now all, all the stupid articles are generated by AI, so that we're going to be living in this, um, this dystopia where AI is feeding them false information about stuff um, indirectly via garbage websites that are meant to, to farm um, traffic. We're gonna ha we have this problem in Gen Z where they don't understand technology, and so even something like um, like flash drives, they might they might intuitively just be able to understand dragging and dropping something onto a flash drive, but they may not even know how to make folders on something. See, tablets and phones, in particular, have gone out of their way to hide the dirty, dirty concept of a folder hierarchy from the user. When you open photos, you just see pictures. You don't see folders of pictures. There's no organization. There's just this big dump in whatever format they decided on, you know, for the device. Um, you know, iPhones might store it in a dated folder. Um, Android might just dump it all under DCIM and camera. 
but you know, there's no, you don't see the folder hierarchy. If you do, it's masked. Like, um, the, I use a, I don't know how to pronounce it, but Aves or Aves or whatever, A-V-E-S is my gallery app for my Android phone. And when I open it, it doesn't say anything in particular about folders when I fire it up. It, it calls them albums, I think, or collections or something. And whenever I tell it, I want to make a, you know, I want I want to make a new grouping for whatever. It it says new album or collection or whatever, um, but it nothing's really a folder anymore. Everything is more, you know, just this this like vague, um, you know, let's just stuff it in this corner kind of thing. It's it's almost like a flat hierarchy where just like you see everything, and at most there's like one folder of depth. But on a computer, you can take a bunch of stuff, organize it into a bunch of folders, and you can make really good use of that to keep things sorted and organized and grouped logically together. But I worry because Gen Z and Gen Alpha, thanks to the dumbing down of these touchscreen devices to the point that they're extremely accessible, well, it also means that there's no reason for them to learn how a folder works or that a folder is really even a thing. <clears throat> there's, there's no need for them to know that to use these dumb, dumb, dumb devices that some brilliant engineers wrote a whole bunch of brilliant software to get working, laid out a bunch of brilliant circuits, you know, nice, complex, sexy designs, so that they could use this piece of technology to watch stupid memes. You know, that, that's it. I can use Instagram filters all day, but, but I don't know what a folder is. And that's, that's kind of the, <laughs> that's a really good slice of the problem that I'm trying to talk about. If you don't know how to operate a folder or how they work or what they are or whatever, and then when you're confronted with a job in the real world, sitting in front of a keyboard and mouse, something that you've not really had to do that much usage of, um, you know, and, and you have to move files around in folders because that's what you have to do or navigate to the server. Oh, heaven forbid you have to navigate to a shared driver or, or shared folder somewhere. Uh, it's like, it's like the apocalypse at that point. So you're being asked to do this stuff and it's just so foreign. So what's going to happen? Well, there's one of two ways that this goes. Either they're forced to, shall we say, grow up, put on the big boy pants and learn the skills or the jobs will have to accommodate these dumb, dumb sheep by using touch screens, crappy touch screens and touch enabled applications to accommodate these people that don't know how to use in these superior input methods. And it, it's bad. It's, it's sort of like we've gotten so good at technology. We've developed it to such a high extent but we're not teaching anyone about it anymore. It, it's not a thing. You know, nobody learns to type in school anymore because boy, I, why do I need to type on a keyboard when my phone has a touch keyboard? Oh, look, and it's got emojis. Oh, wow, emojis. Like, you don't have that on your stupid physical keyboard, you you nerd loser, you know, you, you, you gray beard weirdo or, you know, I, I don't need a keyboard or a mouse or a touchpad. I've got a touch screen. It's, it's totes superior, yo. Um, insert dumb Gen Z meme here. But I'm really worried about this. It, it, it doesn't keep me up at night. But in the back of my mind, it is something I'm really worried about. Because often I've thought about the slow demise of my business, not my business, but my industry, computer repairs. Um, and obviously the answer is switch to services like networking and all that, which, you know, I've been doing that too. So a, re a decline in repair overall isn't going to kill me. <clears throat> but I think about like, I have 20 somethings that come in and they have a MacBook and an iPhone and they're like, I'm out of space on my phone or I'm out of space on iCloud and I want to bring some of the pictures down to the computer so they're not store they're not all on iCloud so I have room again and I can take more photos. Um, can I pay you to do that for me? And I'm like, yes, you can. 
but you know, and I still try to explain to them like this is how it works and this is all you have to do, but it's just it's just rough for me because it, it hurts to see digital natives who can't move their pictures out of where iCloud sees them, like you can't archive photos. It's actually kind of a consequence of the way Macs store stuff. If you stick it all in the photos library where you can actually access it using the photos application, then it's also gonna get synced up to iCloud if you have iCloud stuff enabled. So what are you supposed to do, man? But yeah, it's this like, this helplessness. <coughs> it's not because they're not capable, but it's because they have no idea how to approach it. They, they weren't taught basic skills and, and like, like dealing with a folder hierarchy. And so when they show up and they go, I wanna do this, this fairly simple thing, just move it from here to there, they have no idea, no idea. And if they look it up on the internet, they may not get a satisfying answer. Um, a lot of help articles are garbage. A lot of forum posts are garbage that you have to sift through. I, I would argue that both help articles and forum posts have gotten a lot worse over the past decade. It used to be that if you had a help article on a manufacturer or vendor website, that, <clears throat> well, it, it would notoriously not um, exactly handhold you. <laughs> you. You would at least usually glean enough information that you could move on, find another piece of the puzzle and click and everything would work. But no, everything is just, it's all poorly written or it doesn't deal with your probably common but not the thing the article directly addresses issue. You know, and then the forum posts, it's all just idiots at Microsoft support that are clearly Indian saying, please kindly sir do a clean boot. I would like you to do please kindly clean boot, kindly needful. Uh, and that's all that they do is tell you to just boot your computer in safe mode and and see what happens. And if the problem doesn't go away, then erase everything on your computer and start over because that's the only thing that these people know how to do. And that's kind of where we are. It's like if if they don't know how to fix it, you know, they don't know how to solve the problem, they might just nuke everything and start over. You know, it, it, it's really weird to have all this knowledge in my head and realize that if I look at someone who looks significantly younger than me, there's a good chance that they can tool around social media all day, that they can look stuff up on the internet, but that they can't do something as simple as organize their stuff into folders. You know? And I worry about that. I do, I do. And um, I don't remember what it was that originally inspired me to talk about this, but it, it, the skills gap, it's just, it's its really weird. Um, and I, I don't have a good answer for it. Um, if you really think about it, one of the big consequences of this is that these people are normies. They are normal human beings. There's nothing particularly special or exciting about them. They're just normal people. Um, they're the people who use the computer as a tool and nothing more. They don't care to know more than they have to. And what ends up happening is because of their lack of education, they go with the flow on everything. They, if you talk to them about privacy, they don't know what the hell you're talking about. Privacy, <coughs> privacy, I have nothing to hide. Everyone has something to hide. If you don't believe me, um, take all your clothes off and walk outside. You have something to hide. You know, and, and if it's not, oh, I don't have anything to hide, it's like, well, well, Apple scans your stuff. Apple scans your photos for child abuse material. So, well, I'm not abusing any children, so that's not a problem. It's like, what kind of stupid NPC are you? Like, just because you're not abusing children doesn't mean that their scanning thing has no false positives and won't identify something that you put in your private files as some sort of uh, abusive material and report you to the cops. Shut down your Apple ID. You know, this actually happened to someone he sent pictures of his son's, uh, his son's genitalia to his doctor through Gmail because it was the pandemic and he couldn't go physically see the doctor so the doctor could look at his son's dick and see how, you know, what the rash was that was all over it um, so that he could tell them, you know, you need to do this, this, or this, or you need a prescription for this. 
you know, or it's like it's some infection or whatever. So he had to take a picture of his, of his young child's junk and email it to the doctor. Google scans proactively everything that goes through their system to make sure there's no child abuse material in there. Well, the problem is that the uh, robots behind this stuff, they don't understand any kind of context. All they know is that they see what appears to be a juvenile genital and that, boom, flags you as this person's probably using our system to commit felonies um, and your Gmail account gets shut down and everything connected to that because, you know, you know there's oh, log into Reddit with Gmail, log into whatever website using Gmail, your Gmail account as the key. Well, now you're locked out of all of that. But this is the kind of thing, if you were to talk to somebody younger, they wouldn't care. Because they're like, well, it's, I'm not, it's not happening to me. I'm not, doing, I'm not doing the thing that they're looking for, so it's not a problem. They don't understand the concept. And granted, this is the kind of thing that a lot of people probably don't understand. So maybe it's not a great example. <clears throat> but imagine, if you will, the government tells you you're not allowed to leave your home, you're not allowed to run your business, but you still need to see the doctor. You, your, your child has an infection in a, in a private place and the doctor needs to see it to diagnose it and figure out whether or not your child is okay. And next thing you know, you're locked out of a whole bunch of stuff, can't do your job, and the police come around questioning you about your child abuse. Like, and, and it's not, for every case like this that hits the news and we know about, how many cases exist where this has happened to them and nobody heard, nobody said anything, it never made the news, it wasn't noteworthy enough because, frankly, this probably happens a lot more often than people let on. Now, you can say, you can judge the guy, you can say, well, he shouldn't have been taking pictures of children's genitals. And then he wouldn't have had that problem. Except it was his kid, and he was worried about his kid's safety and welfare. It's very different. It, it, you know, something tells me that the bad guys are not exactly running around going, Oh boy, I want to I see some infected juvenile junk. That's, that's what I want to see. I want to see something that's got a rash all over. I have, a, I have, a, I have an immature genital rash fetish. That's what I've got. Yeah, that oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. That that's what people want to see. They want to see the pustules and shit. That mhm. Mm yeah, okay, whatever. There is no reason that this should have happened. And the problem is that if you have a system where you don't proactively scan to see if somebody's doing something bad, you don't have this kind of false positive that upends someone's life. But if you have a system that does, <laughs> well, it's happened, and it's not theoretical. It's happened, and it's been in the news. It's it was a real thing, and it's it's not the only case. I actually know of uh, a couple of things from way way back, like in the two thousands, where um, I think someone there was a case where someone took a picture. They took pictures of their kids in the bathtub, and because of um, tougher laws that had gone into place, that. Um, you know, like there were like mandatory reporting style laws requiring photo developers to report any abusive images on photos they develop to the police. Well, the guy got reported to the police for kids in a bathtub, his kids in a bathtub or her kids in a bathtub or whatever. I don't know that it was a guy. It's been so long I don't remember the details. But anyway, this is, this is the thing. The, the lack of literacy the lack of basic technical literacy means no questions are asked about this. There's just this, this inherent sort of, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to understand it. I'll just go with whatever the flow is. And, and that's just the end of that. And they can end up in serious crap. Like, for example, um, you know, I have kids and one of my greatest fears is that they won't understand the whole internet thing. And that if you do something that you think is funny or, you know, like you, you think you're being provocative by taking a picture of your butt and, and posting it somewhere. Like, to, okay, to you, kid, that's, that's funny to you and your buddies, maybe, but it's not funny to a bunch of adults and it's not funny to a bunch of stern-faced police who will not look at that as you're being a kid doing dumb thing 
you know, that you think is funny. You're just being a kid doing something stupid like kids do. But instead, no, now, you see, you've taken a picture of your private area and posted it on the internet. So now you, like a uh, uh, you know, nine-year-old or whatever, um, you have manufactured and distributed child porn. This is a real thing too, by the way. This is not me making something up. This is a thing that has happened. It has happened a lot. A lot more than you realize. Um, but the cases don't ever really make it to the news because this kind of thing is, is just... It usually, everybody around it just wants to be quiet about it and, and not broadcast that, oh, look, we were accused of bad thing. Uh, as You know, they want to run away from it because of the stigma. Uh, you know, you're basically guilty, period, um, even if it's whatever. But I didn't come here to talk about kids doing dumb things like that and it being, you know, interpreted by adults as serious. And I'm going to have to educate mine on these kinds of things, tell them about these very real dangers in the world, as any good parent should. But probably won't, because there aren't... I don't think there are a lot of good parents out there, to be perfectly honest. But this is the kind of stuff I worry about. A lack of literacy does not protect you from consequences from your actions. So, if you do something stupid, it can hurt you. It can cause you to get bullied. It can cause you to be thrown in jail. You know, it just depends on what you do. But you, you know, you've got to teach kids to be smart. And a lot of parents have failed their kids because they slap these stupid iPads in front of them and they don't care. They just, they don't do their parenting job. They just let the slate entertain the baby and that's all the baby knows. And the baby sees these morons on the internet falling off of waterfalls and dying and oh that no oh, that looked funny but it's not real because I'm a kid and it's on a screen you know that oh that looked like a fun swim and they have no idea you know and how do they know if they're not told by someone no that person died no no that person suffered serious consequences as a result of that behavior it's not funny it's shocking and you should be shocked not amused but you don't know better because you're a poor kid and that's the thing is like there's there's this whole threat model that children and young teens and older teens even 20 year olds whatever all of gen z and gen alpha face today that was not faced by my generation or the generation immediately after it i would say in generational terms i'd say millennials didn't have to deal with this the way the gen z and alpha do there there are these technical threats to you you know you make one mistake and they could you know someone could break into your email account, get access to all your other accounts through it, because of course, that's your recovery account for a bunch of other things that are really important. You know, things like password reuse, it's pretty common stuff. It, it's just the, the lack of skills, the lack of understanding, um, the, like the refusal to really even learn anything outside of what they happen to run into and decide is worth learning. It's, it's, it's bad. I, I, I don't want to keep talking about it because I'm just, I'm kind of getting depressed thinking about it and I don't see a good solution. I can't run to millions of parents, violently shake them and yell at them until they realize that they're doing their kids wrong. And, you know, and, and it's too late for, for people who are in their 20s. It's too late. They're adults. They, they have been molded with this lack of understanding, this just, you know, the whole laissez-faire attitude towards technology, um, just, they don't care. In general, they just, it's just a means to an end, but they don't really need to understand it. And the only way that they do understand it is if something bad happens to them or someone that they care about, and then, oh, well, that's serious now, isn't it? All right, I'm going to stop being a doom and gloomer and go back to being a millennial boomer. Thanks for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that crap. I'm going to go not drink my worries away.